today was supposed to be a live stream, but it didn't work out. So I've got everything set up. I just am going to record it instead and upload it later to YouTube. So thanks for being here. Um, we're going to work on the face of Elizabeth today. So you can see I've got um, everything set up and ready to go. I've got my source image uh, that you can take a look at um, while while I'm working. And um, got the palette cleaned off and ready to go so we can kind of watch some of the skin tones that are going to be mixed. And frankly, we're just going to kind of see where we end up. Uh, the challenge, one of the challenges is I'm going to challenges I'm going to have is creating uh, a little more age in uh, the model. Um, Elizabeth at this point was older and, um, and so I'll have to reflect that in what I'm creating. So without further ado, here we go. So I'm going to start off by mixing just a few values together. Alright, so I've got my black mixed already. That mixture is a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Um, other colors I have out, lead white, cad yellow, um, a yellow ochre, cad red, uh, cerulean, lizard crimson, and a viridian over here. These are some colors I had mixed uh, previous painting. I'm kind of leaving it out there. I use them uh, for a future painting since this is a series kind of to help me gauge my color mixing for the next piece. Um, so yeah, we're going to kind of get started. I've, so I've already mixed my black here. I'm going to mix a, a darker and warmer um, for kind of a so warmer shadow feel. Uh, so I'm going to use a little more of the burnt sienna. So I'm kind of looking at some of those warm shadows, like that warm shadow there below her, uh, her her jawbone. And there you kind of see it feels just really warm. You know, there's a lot of uh, warm reflected light off the skin there. So we're going to make a little bit of a, a warmer shadow to put there. Shadow, kind of shadow color. Um, and then um, I'm going to do the same. But I'm going to look for kind of some of the cooler uh, shadows that I see, the darker areas that are um, that are present. So I'm going to still do about the same thing. I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, burnt sienna, uh, but then I'm going to take a little bit of <clears throat> the viridian, and I'm going to mix that together. Uh, those are going to mostly neutralize, um, but uh, we can start to create a little more of a, of a cool shadow. I'll take a little more viridian and just let that look a little more neutral, less warm. Um, and that's just uh, not quite a black. It's probably hard to tell on the video here, but it is a, a really dark neutral um, that has some color in it and not necessarily a, a gray. But you know, I, I kind of like that for, for what I'm doing. So those two, there's like a warmer and a cooler uh, dark to, to play back and forth from. I'm going to kind of pick out a like a mid value um, and start with that. I'll take a little bit of yellow ochre. Um, yellow ochre is getting old. I've got some uh, walnut oil gel here. I'm just going to mix in because that's getting a little too thick and hard. That's, I'm getting to the end of that tube, so it's getting this, this that helped it move a little more. Um, we're gonna make this one warm. Take a little alizarin crimson. It's my bluer red. Kind of create a nice kind of mid here. Um, probably um, I'm gonna still neutralize it just a little bit because I know I want to add many different. Uh, 
colors from my from my limited color selection here. So here's kind of a and I want to pull in some of those just because I, I, I don't want to color mixing you know, these these initial piles that I'm trying to make are are just to help me get started. I don't, you know I'm going to do a lot of mixing as I go, but um, I, I want a good start. So let's let's make something a little cooler. Again, I'm going to just take a little bit of my walnut oil there, so I can soften that old paint. Grab some cerulean blue, and you know, can make it a nice uh, kind of greenish color. If I need to darken it just a little more, I can. You know, if I really want to make it green, um, add some uh, ultramarine blue, and then I've got kind of a. And, and I'm going to do a bunch of secondaries here. So, uh, in this in this mid, so this is this is kind of an orange, this is kind of a green. I'm going to mix a little bit of a bit of a purple mid range now. You notice I'm just mixing right on top of the green. It's kind of my mixing pile. I like that because um, I'm just mixing in other color that I have had uh, going already. So this is already a little too red. So I'll grab some ultramarine blue. Let's we'll see if we can cool that off. Oh, see, see how much darker that made it. Um, so rather than take white to lighten it, I'm going to use uh, some yellow ochre. Um, rather than using something achromatic, and I'll, I'll use that to get it just a little lighter. Yeah, still a little needs a, a little bit of softening with that walnut oil gel, and here we go. So now we have I think this is significantly darker, but here are some um, uh, complementary colors. Well, not quite complementary, but but uh, split. Um, um, well, it's kind of a, more of a you know uh, I'm not going to get my words right. Um, a triad uh, here between green, orange, and purple secondary colors that I'm mixing that those would be nice for kind of some of the mid range to dark values. So I'm going to take one more step lighter and do a similar, similar sort of thing. I'm going to mix together and you know, I'm looking at the source and there's going to be some colors that I'll, I'll have to mix very specifically, like say the, uh, the lips, um, you know, we're not going to see much of uh, the eye in this pose, and that's okay. Um, but, you know, I'm going to work on what I can. So, so now I'm getting to the point where I'm not going to achieve the lightness that I need to without going significantly lighter. So I'm going to pull in a little bit of uh, white, uh, lead white, and create some lighter values. Um, just going to keep getting a little bit of that walnut oil gel to give it a little more longevity to my color mix. I can use it a little longer. That's always nice. Get uh, you know more more usage out of out of the mix because you know this process takes can take you know 30 minutes or so just to get the color go get a few color piles ready. So kind of like I did before, I'm going to create uh, a little bit of uh, just a few some secondary colors. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull in some of that white. Um, and, you know, take in a little bit here. So we'll just have kind of a, a bluey green here. You know, a lot of people will ask, well, what do you, uh, you know, how do you mix skin tones? And I'm like, well, you know, I don't really, I don't try to mix anything particular as much as uh, I'm just kind of seeing what's there. Um, this would be nice. Uh, it, you know, this, as I'm looking at the source, there's not many places where this exists, but it, but it will be helpful here and there. And then again, I'm going to take a little bit of that and 
mix in a kind of purpley red. So we can have these three, these three, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more. These are some color I had, some colors I had left over from uh, the previous session, and I may dip into those. Uh, some of those may end up being useful. Um, now I'm gonna kind of make some of my more lighter, lighter values, um, and I, you know, I like to use that same kind of mix pile. So I'm just pulling in some of the colors I'd already have I've already used. Um, so this one, kind of figure out. I think I'm just kind of going to leave it be. Um, now that we've kind of purified that a little bit, I'm going to make a kind of an orange. It's a little more intense with uh, my cad yellow, cad red, and I turn out a little more red than I wanted. But to start, should help us get there, as they say. And, and then I want to do the same thing, just something. I might just go ahead and keep that there so I have another little bit of a high, uh, a lighter value, excuse me. It got a little too red, so I'm going to make kind of a more of a yellowy mixture to. I don't want it to be too uh, pure, so you can kind of, I'm kind of trying to mix up my pile around it. And I'll, you know, really, I'll probably end up being, end up using a mixture of these. Uh, well, I know I will um, as we go. And the last thing I want to do is get a little bit of a, you know, and I am looking at the source material and I'm saying, okay, um, I see how you know some of this is going to work, and where where at times we're going to need to cool it off, warm it up, and just play with some of these edges. Um, so now we've got a nice kind of cooler light as well, because we can we can play with all these, keep working on them, but. This is what I like to do really before I start anything. It's just mix up a few colors with which to start with. You know, I'm going to be able to pull from any of my piles to keep painting, to make the necessary color adjustments as I go. But at least this gives me a good starting point um, with which to begin uh, laying in some of those uh, colors. All right, so I think it's ready to Ready to get a little paint uh, on the canvas. So you can see mixing always takes up just a little bit of time. And um, yeah, so let's let's get started. Uh, I always like to start off with my, my darkest darks. If you've watched my videos before, you know that it's kind of the same method, but uh, that method is it's a good one. It's not one to abandon because you get to continually, um, you know, compare back to that darkest point, of having a fixed point. So it's good to have a, a light fixed point, a dark fixed point, and then everything else we know falls in between. So um, I think you already know, just looking at the face, I'm going to focus mostly on the face. Um, we'll, we'll see if we get to the hair um, later, but I'm going to focus mostly on the face today. Um, but I'm going to still establish some areas in and around 
to help guide me and keep me on track. So I've got a little bit of thinner in my um, in my brush here, grabbing onto this darkest, darkest value that I've created with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna just start right underneath here. And, uh, oh, you know what I forgot to do, meant to do. Um, actually, I don't know if I can do that right now. Take it back. We're gonna go forward this way because I don't think my, some of my paint around is quite dry enough for me to oil out. Normally I like to, well, maybe, maybe I do have a little space. I could do this. So I'll just take maybe a, just a dab of that uh, walnut oil um, and I'll just kind of rub this area with that walnut oil. Um, and that just provides a kind of a, a slicker surface with which to work on. You know, I've already established kind of the, the main drawing with some lights and some dark values. Um, those will help undergird the paint I apply today. So here we go. All right, we're getting these dark values in. So this is me looking around and finding the absolute darkest points and trying to establish those. You know, the points where I feel like I can see no color information. Um, remember, I'm going to have to challenge myself a little bit here and do some invention um, because the, uh, the the person to be depicted um, was, uh, was aged. And so I, I need to make sure I really, really get it. I feel like in around the eyes, you know, I, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of this warmth, but I'm still going to use mostly my, my black and it's still going to be a little warm because it is semi-transparent and whatever I put on top here, there's still, still kind of see through. Really, those are the absolute darkest points uh, in, in the face, and I'll, I, I might grab some of my warm dark to put into some of these points. Whoops, I still got a very wet painting over there, I'm putting my finger down into it, as is my, might have to actually get up and I'll stick today. So laying down a little more here. Um, and one of the next things I, I kind of like to do since I, I'm thinking about it is also put down uh, a light point. So I've establishing the lightest light, darkest dark. Um, and you know, I might mix up one more really intense color here that is meant to be kind of the, the the brightest highlight. I don't want that to be just white. I want it to have some color in it. Um, so I'm going to just take what is hopefully be just a little, obviously that was more than a little, um, and create uh, kind of highlight with just a little bit of a bluish and if I want, I can take a little bit of the cad yellow there in two. Um, and I can make a really pure and it doesn't have too many other colors in it to kind of stick out. So I'm going to put that there. And I am going to use that to go ahead and give myself a kind of a light point too. So when looking at her face, um, the areas that are lightest are, you know, here, 
along the bridge of the nose and the little reflection here and the top of her lip, those reflections. This will take a little bit of adjustment, but I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of that in here and there to just give myself like a white point as well. Um, you know, these aren't as intense as I'm putting them down here, but that at least allows me to bookend my values a little bit and uh, to hopefully make good decisions as I compare to those points as, as I go around. All right, back to the darks. Um, let's find those warm, this warm shadow here underneath her nose. And you might notice I'm basically working on top of uh, what I've already worked on. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm gonna clean up a little bit of my mess here. Um, and what I love about having alizarin crimson on my palette is um, sometimes there are some darks that are just so red and rich and that you know especially here along the line of the lip I mean that that color is just it's just a red it looks it looks and can read um, quite dark but to make it full of uh, chroma and intensity um, can really uh, just make it sing and so I'm gonna put in some of that red it's barely perceptible for that shadow underneath the lip too. It's red and intense and we don't want to lose lose that um, so the shadow passing through kind of the this is a lighter value than kind of what I'm giving it right now and so we might have to go back in and adjust that some but uh, the shadow that's working its way across there is also very, very red um, and, and warm. And maybe, just maybe we'll pull in just a tab of this that we've already mixed together. It's just a little lighter. Okay. Um, well, since I have a little bit of this lighter value pulled into here, I'm going to go ahead and establish the, the line of the chin. Um, yep, I'm going to need my mull stick. Okay. And I know I'm... So I don't want to mess with any of the cams, which are also very precarious. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I've got some of that little bit of a lighter, warmer mixed in here. And, and so I'm gonna just set, determine this line, kind of looking, watching, kind of comes off of here. I know uh, she's got a little more age, so rather than keep this even, I'm going to create just a little bit of a, uh, a jowl here. Because while my model is is uh, is, is basically ready and willing um, I, I, and, and available. Uh, sometimes I just need enough of a face uh, structure in order to build the painting around. I'm going to 
just kind of keep putting in some of these as I see them. And we'll get a little more specific. But I'm going to leave it a little painterly because that will aid us in the in the aging. I'm going to take this next little value here. I'm going to use it for the far side. It's a little cooler. And it's probably darker than what I'm putting down. But, or, well, it's probably, yeah, it's probably a little darker than what I'm putting down here, but that's all right. But that cooler shadow will kind of send this edge back uh, a little bit. And that's a way that you can play with color temperature in order to kind of help achieve uh, space and, and create distance. Let's see. Get some shadow on the face here. You might see kind of when I paint across here how much that white still shows through and that's good that I have just some of those uh, colors to undergird um, what I'm what I'm working on. Let's see. Just kind of searching. You might have noticed I lightened that up just a little bit, but I'm going to get some of these edge shadow edges, which are still in the dark, dark side of the face. I'm going to slowly work it on the, the gradation. Same little bit as here on the nose. And I'm going to make it a little greener underneath and around the eyes. Uh, can oftentimes be a little cooler around around the eyes. Uh, I mean, it just kind of depends on which kind of where where you are in the eyes. Sometimes a little warmer, sometimes a little cooler. There's a lot of great subtle color temperature things that happen near the eye. side of the nose there and okay. describe the shadow across here and you might see there's kind of a really nice warm edge to here though I'll just keep using the same brush um, for a while that starts to get a little warm, and when I look at the colors that I've mixed, it doesn't quite exist. So I might just take over here a little bit of burnt sienna. Um, I was just kind of looking along here, and it looked kind of really warm. See kind of the far side of the forehead here. Notice my mark is kind of rounded. Um, I'm thinking about kind of following the form because we're going to eventually have to describe everything in here, but we want to we want to get there. Uh, 
and I'm going to exaggerate some of this and make the chinks, cheeks a little more sunken. than they are um, as we attempt to age Elizabeth here just a little bit. There's a little green and warm in there. There's a lot of fun colors. We're gonna we're gonna play all that against one another. I mean, that's that's a big thing with um, kind of mixing the secondaries as I can play the purple off the oranges and the greens and then we can, you know, bring in all the rest of the colors I have on the palette until we really, uh, until we really get there. Okay. So I'm just grabbing some of these down here and I'm going to try to keep the brushwork uh, fairly uh, loose and I'll probably leave some edges and some things that I might otherwise soften up um, but we're trying to create age here and get in there. And I'm just hunting and looking for those values as I see them, I'm trying to put them down. Again, you notice we haven't really gone past about a mid-range value yet. Making this side just a little cooler. And this side over here is going to be a little warmer because we'll really want that to come forward, everything else to move around. And these are just subtle, subtle changes you can make in order to make that happen. And we're going to make a lot of adjustments, so now I'm kind of making a few decisions um, to kind of speed along my, my effort here. So now I'm not quite seeing the color that I want. Um, I want it to be somewhat like this, a little bit of this. Um, and needs to be a little more, a little more intense um, before I kind of start describing a little bit. And it's really warm down here. A lot of light bouncing around in here. Okay, I think that's all that I'm going to do. I've talked about it a lot, but I don't keep I don't keep thinners um, in my my studio practice uh, or like like an odorless odorless mineral spirit or anything like that because I try to keep the uh, the air as healthy as possible. So I just kind of wipe off brushes and then I continue using them. We're gonna take that brush that we made some of the light marks earlier with and. Um, I'm going to begin getting in some of these lighter values. So, a little too intense here. <laughs> um, a little too light. And that's what's nice about like having the rest of this. So I, can, I can work right back into that with stuff I've already have ready. Um, sometimes using Something that I think will be a little better. Um, some of these 
these light value planes here. They're going to describe some of these, get some paint down, and start working them together. You notice how much that light really helps underneath there. And you know it can come together really quick, um, just with playing with these. There's going to be a lot of a lot of adjustment, fiddling, and, and it's coming. Don't worry. But at least right now we can get a lot established and built up. With very very few color planes. Um, I mean, it's already it's quickly transforming. So I'm missing kind of a reddish. I'd like a color here, I'd like to put a little more pink. No, it's just a little redder. There's a lot of blood vessels that are are in the nose and um, that's often very a spot that's redder across the kind of brow here. So yeah, so sorry if you uh, tried to tune into the live stream and it didn't happen. I apologize. I meant thanks for watching now anyway. Appreciate that. Supposed to be a nice Saturday live stream. Put in some of these mid range values and mix down into the paint that's already there. Try to begin to stay a little more angular. Um, a little rougher around the edges. Creating a portrait with a little more age. Sometimes, um, uh, just you know, looking art historically, so I always do my art historical research, especially when I'm working on something that has been depicted in art history, um, to, to see what, uh, what's out there. And, um, yeah, she is, uh, depicted in many different ways. Sometimes, uh, I like, uh, forgive the term. Uh, an old crone, uh, and it's like, well, I'm not going to quite uh, take it that far. Um, and so we're going to definitely make, make it work. I'd like to add some of the red of the lip, the slower lip. These are subtle, subtle changes, although I'm going to pull in a little uh, lizard and crimson for this front side here. And it's okay to, you know, save some of this really intense color for the edges. Um, where light meets dark. You can do a lot in that space that... Uh, where you can have some fun cools and warms and uh, create a lot of energy there. Yeah, 
yeah, lips are, uh, we, we tend to make them more, we tend to exaggerate a little bit on the color. And, um, and some color exaggeration is good. That's why painting is awesome, right? You want to play with color and do something that you can't do uh, just by taking a photograph. And, um, but you do have to be uh, a little, Careful not to take it too far. Sometimes I take it a little too far. So it's nice about having a few of these piles mixed up. Um, I can shift the color a little bit without uh, having to pull in a direct tube from uh, a direct tube color because I've already mixed up a few kind of fixed points that are, that are really helpful. So you might see I'm just kind of bouncing around in terms of my light values, getting a nice. Um, color here to just finish off this edge. Let's see my exaggeration here, um, trying to give a little more age to Elizabeth. We'll kind of really choose some fixed points. We might have a few, um, wrinkles here on the edge and we'll see what we can do kind of uh, here in the brow as well. Too red. See, then I'll just take from my green here and I'll neutralize that out. Again, it creates some good energy. Take take up my dark brush again. I'm seeing some opportunities for some shadows in here. Cool. They're really warm bouncing around in there, so I'm gonna bring it back. Okay. Switching back to the light brush. Describe this area here around the nose. Just really haven't gotten a color there yet. Remember, you can always add a little bit of warmth over the bridge of the nose here. Um, A lot of blood flowing in there. And
let's see, no. Hadn't really addressed the area up here yet. Forehead, forehead carries a lot of age. You know what, what I don't want to do is, you know, kind of create some lines, but I think if I create a few uh, bands of color together, we'll, we'll do it really, really subtly and nicely. Using some of the brightest color here on this forehead, where the forehead's Take some of the more yellowy color for this space in here. I think those are the highest highlights. From the far side of the nose there to figure out what I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe this is shadow here. And then there's actually a little bit of a highlight. You can barely see it on this side. Um, it's kind of the same highlight here, but it's here up on the nose. And I'm just gonna I know that's too much, but it's a start and we could knock it down some. Again, we'll keep these lines just a little harder so we can communicate age. That would also, um, hopefully that kind of tells you, oh, uh, so I also create, uh, I can also soften some of those points to make uh, someone uh, feel more youthful. And, and yes, that, that would do that. There's also you know, subtle decisions you can make with proportions. Um, create more youth or more age. If you're wondering, yes, I did finish up the enunciation and good to go. I'm kind of looking here. It's a lot darker than I have it up here around her eye here.
Okay. Now, and I need a little more, so, you know, I've, I've kind of blocked everything in. Uh, this, is a, this is a good overall common stage spot at this point where everything is mostly in. Uh, it's not right yet, um, but it's kind of another one of those like, all right, good points of, of finish uh, where I can really assess what needs attention. So from here, I'm going to bounce around quite a bit as I just refine some of the things I've done um, and, uh, and see where we end up. Let's see, I'm going to see if I can set this down. I think I have enough real estate there for me to use my pinky. Um, but uh, now from this point forward, um, there's not a lot to, it's not as nearly as much to talk about and discuss, um, but just a few, you know, continuing to make it, make good adjustments um, and uh, get closer and closer. Like, so, you know, first thing I noticed, I was like, okay, there's a, uh, I'm going to carry the shadow, just it casts a little farther. So, you know, I've gotten out the more smaller brush and it will continue to get more and more refined. Uh, I'm just going to shadow a line here on the far side of the nose. Um, at this point you're saying, well, why do you start where? It's like I start wherever I'm bothered the most. Um, I'll kind of be moving around and asking myself, okay, what what needs it next? Um, and so yeah, this is just darker than I have it. And I think the, lot, the eye is probably not quite as far as I am either. So. Yeah, and this is also a good time to make drawing adjustments. So I'm picking even now little things that just seem you know, a little funny and, um, and changing them. So a lot of these little nice warm edges that I get to kind of drop in that I see next to these shadows and those are fun. Uh, they, they create that vibrancy without uh, being too, too gearish. So you might notice them kind of almost picking up, you know, direct tube paint. because it's on the edge or if I flip the brush a little bit on accident. Um, it's not noticeable. But it uh, creates you know, life. In your portrait. This goes a little farther than I have it into the dark so that it's visible. I 
I'm weary about this next move. There's kind of a dark area that goes out. I don't want to lose my drawing. Seems to be doing okay. I like that clarity that was in there, and I just didn't want to, didn't want to lose it. Yep, that turned out all right. There's a lot of warmth on the edge of the, the eyelashes. And sometimes I just see bigger problems as I'm going. I'm like, well, this. Lot at this area was a little lighter. Way across there. Probably took too far, but. Another opportunity here for me to just create a little bit of an age in um, this space here. Right underneath the eyes, even though we're at an angle that it's hard to pick up. We can create just a little more darkness there. part is I have a lot of um, the areas covered, you know, here, the edges of the eyes where you can't make out. So I'm really having to kind of create the age here on the nose, more sunken cheeks, and, um, just a little bit of a hanging jowl here. Um, you might notice that I'm, I'm still following the main forms uh, that you see in my source. Those are still informing me about the main players uh, in, in the image. This is a great spot where it's a little cooler. It's really probably going to play that up. So you get those plays, those warm and cool back and forth, which are so fun. The 
the same over here. Of course, uh, I'll, I'll be able to kind of do gray hair along here, um, and that will that will help too. Um, In fact, I may go ahead and lay in a little bit of that um, see how it changes the face Get a little bit thinner on my brush and I'll just we'll just go at it follow the what's happening in the color there with, with highlights you know occurring you know here and and that kind of darker areas here I need them to be a little cooler, a little too warm. You know, and I can still kind of follow that line. Tilting my black a little bluer, a little cooler. It's still, you know, dark in the shadow back here from the from the hood, from the head covering. But I'll still pay close attention to those things.
that's hoping be just to see it a little more. So, you know, while I'm still kind of paying attention to the overall values that are present, um, I'm just kind of still using that visual information to give uh, the, the hair a grayer look. Um, so, I mean, I guess let that be known. A lot of times your, your value or you know, value in general is, is a good indicator of, of most things. So if you've got great value going, um, you're not going to have to do much else. Uh, what happens if we put a little bit of cerulean blue on this edge. Just kind of for for fun. And uh, if you've seen my past videos where you know I'm doing hair, you just got to keep it loose. You know, um, it works the best when you're not thinking about it in terms of um, a bunch of lines, but as just a collection of a couple of shapes. Yeah, and you can still use your brushwork to like help get there, um, but uh, you know, don't. Uh, Don't, don't, don't get out a little tiny brush and try to describe each one. You know, but the smallest I'll get is, you know, I'll use this flat here, just kind of on its side. It's the reason why I like to use a brush like this, like turn it and use various shapes and I could still just keep using the same one that just doesn't have to leave my hand. Slight movements and can it make it uh, work and adjust. So I like how it's looking. That doesn't always happen, by the way. I'm sure, I'm sure you don't believe me, but many, many times it just doesn't seem to be happening. <laughs> I still kind of make all gray highlights here and we'll pass that into to have that kind of still roll around there and you know these are these are rough strokes you know um kind of kind of wild kind of let's see what happens a little bit of hey i hope i get lucky and something just really works that happens too Especially with hair, hair. You know, if you're doing a pet portrait or you get in the portrait, you just let loose when you get to the hair. We almost always try too hard. It's just not necessary. Do a little bit of skin tone here. It's not going to be a whole lot of difference noted there, but at least if I get some color down, I can bump up to, to it.
trying to decide how um, you're probably noticing on the source material there's just a bunch of weird lines here uh, yeah that's kind of how uh, it was when I pieced everything together when I was building the composition so there's a little bit of just deciding I have to do um, you know the the white that is present uh, in the uh, in the head covering is back here so I'm going to try to describe a little bit of it even though I'm really not in that section yet um, I kind of wanted to go ahead and make a decision about how I want that to look. And so you got to just always be thinking, you know, what, what painting do I want to make? Um, yeah, I've got a picture here. So what? Um, what painting do I want to make? And, you know, how what's going to be the most interesting i think this breaking you know if i cover this with a line here i think it's uh would be worse off and so you know i'm kind of thinking all right i'm gonna sort of hide it behind here uh, make maybe make a, a flyaway or two to just kind of hint at just some hair just a few strokes you can see to next to nothing um, and I'll probably leave it out like that. Get a little tighter here. Um, as you see, there's there's just no information for me uh, in, in my source, which is fine. Um, we're just gonna play with it until it works sometimes that's what it takes you know so right now uh, you know I can't make anything else it's not working I think it needs to go darker because um, that'll really then allow that cheek to come forward and this will should recede and yeah there'll be a lot of uh, ambiguities right around here like, okay, where does the head covering and the hair and where does that all begin and end? And uh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, the big thing is, is do, you know, do I want to question it? So I think I just like kind of see an opportunity here for me to take a little bit of a lighter uh, bit of a hair that kind of comes, comes out. And again, not much, if you don't want to do this too many times, but you know, like it's just a little, little kind of messy here. Uh, maybe that's it. Probably went too far on that last one. Um, I can. Since I do have a little bit of walla doil, I can kind of rub that out a little bit. I do have a little bit of drawing decision to make. It's kind of weird. You might might see it. Um, you know, where again? Where does that edge go to? Here, just a little strange spot. Um, wow, well, really obvious thing uh, that, uh, you know, as I, as I continue to jump around, decide to work on things, other things, you know, it's funny to me how I'll, I'll come across um, something that I've just left and I haven't thought about. <laughs> it's, it's this edge right here. Um, that's a really crucial, crucial edge for making the forehead move back around. 
Um, and if I describe that well, uh, it's going to go back and then going to go kind of there underneath the, the hair. But, uh, but I got to get it right. Um, so I'm kind of looking at that spot, seeing what I'm going to do. Get up my dark brush. Probably going to be, I'm going to make it a little greener, a little more that kind of purple so that hopefully it kind of moves back and around. Um, a lot of these are sub subtle choices you make um, as to how you know, as to how it's going to work. I think I'm going to go a little darker and just take this edge. And you'll notice what a, what a change that suddenly brings. I do have a nice, um, really, I'm going to get this nice and dark here. Soften that a little too far. I can just kind of work back into it. Work back into it. It's, it's a really hard edge right here too, right? You know, because you'd say, okay, where does I need to just soften that so that it moves back around, and not just because it's soft, but because the form is to we're, we're turning the form, we're telling the viewer how that form turns around. Um, so that little spaces like that are really critical. Begins to change it quite a bit. It's a funny thing about working on these for so long, you just like I missed adjusting that for <laughs> forever and then I, now that I, I was like how did I not see that so it's really important to step back take a look it's a luxury I don't have with this crazy camera setup um, but definitely take those moments to pause and, and look and see see how it's going um, Probably take a little bit of this uh, gray into the tops of the eyebrow right here. Um, can subtle, subtle thing. Do the same for the other side too. Have to be careful. It's probably gonna be too much. These are, you know, hard things to see uh, on on the stream. But I think all the rest of the changes I'm going to make are going to be really uh, almost imperceptible. So. We're going to stop it here for today, and I do thank you for watching. Um, hopefully, we'll have um, the internet sorted out. Uh, I've got a technician coming. 
and we can get to more live streaming this week. Um, and uh, who knows how long it'll take for this video to actually upload, but we'll find out. Uh, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Just drop them off in the comments. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe. And if you want to help teach the next person, you can always become a patron um, and, and help me uh, have more opportunities to do things like this. I hope um, you're doing well today. Uh, best and God bless.